Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Life Hack Show, a feature production of lifehack.org, where we help you to live your best life without sacrifice. I am so fired up and excited to be welcomed by Antonio Neves today. Just a little bit about him. Antonio is an internationally recognized leadership speaker, author, podcast host, and award-winning journalist. He's the author of three books, and his next book, Stop Living on Autopilot, Take Responsibility for Your Life, and Rediscover a Bolder, Happier You comes out January. I'm fired up for it already, y'all. <laughs> on his podcast, The Best Thing, Antonio talks with fascinating people about the best thing to happen to them that would never appear on a resume, bio, or come up in conversation. For nearly 10 years, Antonio has helped organizations increase workplace engagement, create strong cultures of accountability, and tell stories that make people really lean in. Antonio's clients and audiences are some of the largest brands in the world, including Google, Starwood Hotels and Resorts Worldwide, Stanford University, and countless more. An award-winning journalist, Antonio worked as a correspondent, host, and producer for over 10 years in New York City with, you know, some top networks you may have heard of, including NBC, PBS, BET Networks, Advertising Age, and Nickelodeon. Antonio is a graduate of Western Michigan University and earned a master's degree from a place, it's, it's got a little bit of a reputation, you know, Columbia University. Antonio, thank you so much for being here, brother. Listen, man, it's a joy to be here with you. Like you are an inspiration to me, Justin, and all the work that you do and how you support people on social media and beyond. And I appreciate you for having me on. Well, I really appreciate the kind words. And before I start blushing too much, we're going to dive right into this thing. And I want to start out by talking about the podcast, The Best Thing. I've had the pleasure of listening to this and really hearing you lean into this unique perspective that I think so many people need to hear. Can you give the listeners a little bit of an insight behind the heart and the mission of the show? Yeah, I love that you mentioned the word heart because that's what it's really about. When I talk about The Best Thing... Typically, Justin, people think about when you say the best thing, they talk about getting married, having kids, graduating from college, you name it. And all those things are fantastic. But what I've found, Justin, is that sometimes the best thing to happen to you are those things that won't show up on a resume, a bio, or come up in conversation. There, there aren't those traditional markers of success. So I wanted to talk to amazing men and women to learn about the best things that happen to them that are unique. And to give you some examples, Justin, there are some people that talked about the best thing being their family losing everything in the Madoff Ponzi scheme wow. and how that caused them to reinvent themselves. For some people, the best thing, there's a guy, Damon West, that got sentenced to 65 years in a Texas penitentiary. Ended up getting parole. Thank goodness. Now he's living a life of recovery and service. But he talks about that sentence being the best thing. And just one more example, um, a good friend of mine, John Gordon, the amazing author, talks about how the best thing was one day his wife telling him that if things don't change, I'm going to end this relationship and take our kids another direction. Mm. So sometimes, as you know, the best thing to happen to us isn't necessarily pleasant. It isn't necessarily fun, but is absolutely required. Mm. And, you know, that's what I love talking to folks about. And I can't wait to have you on the podcast as well. Hey, man, whenever you're ready to do it, let's go because I'm fired up just listening to it. Guys, do yourself a favor and go listen to this podcast. Obviously, there's so many great podcasts out there, but Antonio is really leaning into these guests and pulling a different type of information out there. The, the things that really are the underlying things that make us tick as human beings. And so you cannot go wrong by listening to this podcast and really just consuming yourself with it. Now, the qu next question I want to ask you is obviously you've had all these amazing people on. You've heard their wonderful stories. What are some of the biggest lessons and takeaways that you've personally had from interviewing all these amazing people? Yeah, I think the biggest lessons and takeaways I've had is this, is this reminder of how important resilience and how important grit is, right? You know, things are great. It's easy to behave and respond when things are going our way. But the question always begs, Justin, what happens when things aren't going your way? What happens on a bad day? What happens when you get bad news? How are you going to choose to show up? And it's a reminder that we have a choice every single day. But it's also a great reminder, Justin, of reframing. Like sometimes what we consider to be a bad experience, a bad upbringing, a bad marriage, a bad relationship, getting fired from that job. If we use the right mindset, the right reframing, it can actually be something that catapults us positively into the future. But the thing that, as you know, that's unique about that, 
that invites us to take responsibility for our experience as opposed to blaming everyone else. And that's where the hiccup typically comes. We want to blame everyone else, but at what point are we going to say, okay, this wasn't right. (laughs) This wasn't cool. And I have to take responsibility for my future and how I'm going to move moving forward. I love that. And that's so powerful. I love that you talked about personal responsibility because as coaches, we both know that even though personal responsibility is really hard, it's uncomfortable to do, to really shine that mirror, to turn it around on yourself and to accept ownership of your shortcomings and the reason why your life looks the way that it does. On the other side of that, what I don't think people give enough attention to is the fact that with personal responsibility comes power. Because not only are you accepting responsibility for the bad, but you're actually stepping into the power of saying, if I created this from a bad perspective, look at the power that I have to actually create what I want. And that is so, so amazing. I love that you shared that with the people. I want to ch- shift gears a little bit and transition into talking about your book that's coming out. I'm, I'm excited about this. So stop living on autopilot. I love that title. Give us a little greater understanding, a summary of the book, if you will. And then also, what do you mean when you say to stop living on autopilot? Yeah, well, well thank you. First, just to follow up on what you just said, uh, Justin, as you know firsthand, what I have to remind people is that with discipline comes freedom. Mm. Those seem like opposites, but sometimes when you create discipline, it actually creates freedom. I have young kids. You have kids as well, Justin. What I want to remind them all the time is that sometimes doing the right thing and the easy thing are two different things. Yes. I'll repeat that. Doing the right thing and the easy thing are two different things. Most of us want to go towards the easy thing, but the right thing won't steer you wrong. And that's really what the book Stop Living on Autopilot is all about. And it really came from a personal experience, Justin, because a few years back, man, I realized that I was on cruise control, man. Mm -hmm. I was doing what society expected of me. I was doing what my mom and dad wanted, what society expected of me, but I was not doing what I wanted to do. And so I was a bit on what they call the hedonic treadmill. And I realized at some point I had to go back to personal responsibility. I had to take responsibility for my life and what I wanted to see moving forward, not just in my career, but my relationships, et cetera. The challenge, Justin, is this, as you know, on paper, sometimes everything could look right. You got your education, you ended up with the right partner, you have kids, maybe the bank account looks right, the link, the LinkedIn profile looks right, Instagram looks right, but inside you can be personally unfulfilled. And mm-hmm. it, it creates this big cognitive dissonance because on paper, everything looks good, but internally, I'm not feeling right. So this book was something that I experienced personally and so many other folks are experiencing personally, but it's about reclaiming your life, taking accountability and responsibility for it and being willing to do the things, frankly, that most others will never do to take control. So you're not complaining, you're not blaming others. And again, it shows up with that A word that most people don't like to talk about, accountability. And for me, it was firsthand because I had reached a life that was quote unquote successful, but I wasn't unfulfilled. And Justin, I realized there were some key things that I had stopped doing that got to me to where I was that I needed to start doing again. I absolutely love that. And I can so deeply resonate with that because I've gone through that in my own personal journey. And I think so many people can. And I was listening or reading some recent research that was talking about how only three out of 10 people in the world would say that they're happy. Wow. And whenever you go and you look at the breakdown of our life and you see that your career accounts for 33% of your life, you start to really see the correlation between the dissatisfaction that you're feeling, that, that lack of fulfillment that you're seeing in your career and the effect that it's having on the rest of your life. And so I know that that's just one small part of it, but I think that it's a big key piece. And so I love the fact that you're really leaning into this because I know that there's so many people out there who are going to resonate with this that are going to benefit from the book. And now in the book, one of the things you talk about is this idea of living on cruise control. There's so many people we know they're out there, they're settling, they're playing small, they're just going through the motions of life. They're stuck on that treadmill, just like you mentioned. So what is something that people can do in order to get off cruise control and to start taking back the power and control of their life and career? 
Yeah, great question. But before I even go there, I want to remind us that society is set up for us to go on cruise control. Yes. Listen, we talk about the American dream and the American dream is awesome, but we got to be honest with ourselves, Justin, that the American dream in many ways is about consumerism. Mm. It is about buying that house. It is about buying that car. It is about doing these things that on the surface are good, but we never really stop to ask ourselves, is this what I want to do? Is this what I want? An example, let me give you an example, Justin. In my book, I tell the story about two business owners. They're being interviewed in the New York Times. These are two very successful business owners. And they're from New York City. And one of the business owners is talking about what it was like in New York City in the early uh, 1990s. And at some point during the interview, he says, oh man, I really miss the old New York. And he was talking about what it was like before all the improvements and different things happened. Mm. But his business partner corrected him, Justin. His business partner said, you don't miss the old New York. What you miss is the old you. Mm, Who you powerful. were during that time. Yeah, man, you were bold. You were courageous. Yes. You were optimistic. You were taking risks. Those things that in some shape or form, all of us did when we were young. So I like to invite the person that's listening to this right now, the person that's watching this right now to ask themselves, when's the last time they were bold? Mm. When is the last time they were courageous? When is the last time they did something that their heart rate increased? Mm. When is the last time they did something? They got those butterflies in those, their stomach. When is the last time they did something that their hands were trembling? And I'm not talking about quitting their job. I'm not talking about moving to a new city. I'm talking about starting a brand new project. I'm talking about being willing to press send on that email to make an ask. I'm talking about being willing to hit publish on that Instagram or blog post that's going to make you feel a little bit funny inside. I'm talking about being willing to see that person across from you in a coffee shop that you know that you wanted to connect with for a long time, and you're going to go up to them and introduce yourself. Not the big things, those things, those small things we tend to take for granted. So when's the last time you were bold and you were courageous? Another thing I like to think about, and this is perfect for you, Justin, because I know you are a lifelong learner, is have you stopped learning? A lot of people at some point, they stop learning. They get outside of the classroom and they just say, I don't need to learn anymore. But are, are you listening to those podcasts? Are you listening to this right now? Are you reading those books that continue to educate yourself? And the last thing I'll say that people can do, Justin, to get off of cruise control and to stop living on autopilot is to think about the people that they spend their time with. Mm. I invite everyone that's watching this right now, who's listening to this right now, to ask themselves a really challenging question, but a question that can change your life. And here it is. Think about the five people. Right now, think about the five people you spend the most time with and ask yourself this simple yet challenging question. Do they make you better? Mm. That's powerful. Do the five people you spend the most time with, do they make you better or do they keep you standing still where you are? A matter of fact, just to go another level, Justin, do you make those people better or are you helping them stand still? So those are some small things, Justin, but some big things that can have a major, man, a major impact. Uh, I couldn't agree with that more. And guys, listen to the questions that Antonio just asked. And even better than that, don't just listen, actually answer those questions for yourself. When was the last time that you were bold and courageous? When was the last time that you put yourself in that state of uncomfortability that you really went out there? And like Antonio said, it's not something where you've got to be getting on stage in front of thousands of people or doing these things that we tend to consider as far as like celebrity status, whatever. If you want to be able to live your best life, if you want to stop living on autopilot, you have to actually answer these questions for yourself. So lean in, go back, rewind, listen to those last couple of minutes and write down those questions and take it seriously and actually answer those for yourself. And if you do that and you start to actually take action on the answers to those questions, I promise you it will transform your life. All right, Antonio, obviously you're somebody whenever we think about living your best life and like really going after your goals and dreams. We read through your bio, man. We've seen some of the amazing experiences that you've had, you know, the, the, the accolades, internationally recognized speaker, multiple time author, being a, a um, working on all these different high, high profile networks, being a, a coach, all these great things. Out of all of those experiences, obviously our, our, our mission here at Life Hack is to help people live their best lives. 
What is the biggest lesson or takeaway that you have from all those experiences as it pertains to living your best life? It's a great question. And it's funny. It's not the actual like things that will show up on my resume, Justin. It's, um, I'm a kid from a small town in Michigan. I'm from a town that a lot of, not of people leave. I'm a first generation college student. So yeah, you heard the Ivy league, Columbia university. You heard, and I didn't know what the Ivy league was when I was in high school. I'm the first generation college student. My mom paid for her credit card on my, uh, on her, um, on her credit card. I'll say the, the biggest thing I, I think about today is that decision I made. I graduated from college and I got that quote unquote good job that everybody <laughs> talks about. You know that good job everybody oh, yeah. talks oh, about? Yeah. I, got a I, got, <laughs> I got that good job that with the paycheck that shows up every two weeks. I got that good job with the benefits. I got that good job with the insurance. I even had a good job, Justin, that had a car. that had like a freaking car that I had every single day. And I did that good job for almost a year. But Justin, I knew after a year of doing that job that even though it was a good job, Justin, it wasn't my job. Mm. It was a good job, but it wasn't my job. And I have to remind people all the time, Justin, that sometimes just because you are good at something doesn't mean that you're supposed to be doing it. Yes. That's a powerful lesson. And that good job I had after I graduated from college Deep inside, Justin, I always knew I wanted to be a storyteller. I was always curious and I had this big sense of wonder and I wanted to work in the entertainment industry. And what led to me getting to where I am today, and let's be clear, it's still a journey. Everything's not mm. solved. Everything's not perfect. But what led to that, Justin, was quitting that good job and moving to New York City with about $800 in my bank account in the year 2000. Mm. I knew one person, that one person was kind enough to give me a floor to sleep on for over six months while I figured things out and worked temp jobs and worked retail at H&M and worked uh, catering jobs, et cetera. All of that eventually led to me working in the television industry and then transitioning to leadership and development work and then leading to writing books and speaking on those stages, et cetera. But the big decision to answer your question, Justin, is that decision we all have to make at some point in our lives. Frankly, that, that decision that most people avoid, most people ignore, and most people will not, will not make. And that is this. Are you willing to bet on you? Mm. Mm. Imagine walking into a casino in Las Vegas and you go to the sports book area where they're betting on all the major sporting events, baseball games, basketball games, football games, horse races, but you look up and your name is up there. Yeah. What are the, are the odds in your favor or against you accomplishing what you most want to accomplish? So my invitation for everyone watching this, everyone listening to this is to be willing to bet on you. And no, does that mean you have to quit your job today? Does that mean you have to move to a brand new city? Does that mean you got to get divorced? Absolutely not. But it does mean being willing to make a decision to identify what your next step is. Maybe you're going to visit that new city you're thinking about. Maybe if you are having challenges in your relationship, you're gonna do some counseling. Maybe if you're interested in pivoting your career, doing something different, you're gonna schedule that informational meeting with someone out there that's doing the work that you wanna do. But there's been a consistent thread of our conversation today, Justin, is that the onus, the responsibility lies only on one person, and that is you which is not the easiest thing to hear, but it's also miraculous to hear because you have a say in this. And that's what I believe this life is all about. Remembering that we have a say in this, Justin, you know this, I know this, and odds are, if you're listening to this, you know this as well. God, dude, you got me so fired up right now. <laughs> all right, real quick, last question. So for somebody who is wanting to live their best life, they know that they've been stuck on autopilot. They've been stuck in cruise control. They're ready to go out there and start doing something that's going to move them in the direction of their best life. What is that one actionable step that they could take today, this week, to start moving in that direction? Get ready. I hope you're buckled up. And here's what it is. Make a decision. Make a choice. Right now, there is something in front of you that's requiring you to make a decision to make a choice, but you have been waiting. You have been choosing not to make a decision. You've been choosing not to make a choice. You've been hemming and hawing here and the well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Make a decision. I have to remind people every single day, Justin, that not making a decision is making a decision. Say that again. Say that again. 
not making a decision is making a decision. I got to remind you, I have to empower you, I have to instill in you that you have it within you to make a choice, that you have a say in this. Am I promising you that the decision you make is going to be the right decision? No. But holy moly, what momentum you will create if you choose to make a decision. You know, Right now, Justin, someone is listening. I'm listening right now, and they know that holy moly. There's been a decision I've been putting off. Mm. There's a tough conversation I've been unwilling to have. There's something I've been unwilling to write. There's something I've been unwilling to publish. There's something I've been unwilling to send. And Justin, I know you know this because I read your Instagram posts. I see the uncomfortable things you say out loud that most will never have the confidence to be willing to, or the courage to say out loud. So again, the end listener, I implore you today, whatever decision you've been pushing pause on, Whatever position you've been saying, I, I, you know, let me wait to the fall. Don't wait. Make that decision today. Guys, I, I'm fired up right now. I know that you listening are fired up. Go back and re-listen to this episode because there are so many nuggets in here, things that you can do, transformations that can take place inside of you in an instant that will literally transform your life if you lean into this. Unfortunately, Antonio, that's the, the time that we have. I could talk all day to you about this stuff, but tell the listeners real quick where they can go to connect with you, to lean in, to learn more about you and everything that you got going on. Yeah, I appreciate you, Justin, for taking this time, for asking such amazing questions. You're the perfect person uh, to do this based on your life and how you choose to live and the decisions that you make every single day. Hey, if you want to learn more about me, I invite you to go over to theantonionevs.com on every social media handle from Instagram to Twitter to Facebook. I'm at the Antonio Neves. Come find me, reach out. I respond to every email that I receive. It may take 48 to 72 hours, but I will respond. And I'm excited to hear about the decisions that you are going to make. Awesome. Guys, we'll link to all of those different locations in the description, but definitely go check out what Antonio has going on. If what he said today is resonating with you, then you need to go and get a more intimate connection with him because the guy really is living it as we speak right now. Antonio, I want to thank you so much for being here, for really leaning in and sharing your passion with the listeners. And to the listeners, I want to thank you all for being here. It's because of you. It's because of your dedication and your leaning in that we have this platform, that we have this opportunity to show up, to share our passions, and to create impact in this world. And if you want more great resources and content just like this, hop on over to lifehack.org or stay tuned for the next episode.